Others love everyone and welcome. Today we're going to read Romans chapter 3. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our righteous unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God for their eyes. Now we know what that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty for God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God, without the law, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is the boasting then? It's excluded. By what law? Works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that any that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. 
Do we then make void the law through faith? (laughs) God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. I hope that reading blessed you. Let's do a little review. Verses 1 through 8 in Romans 3 basically talks about the advantage the Jews or the circumcised have over the Gentiles or the uncircumcised. Basically, if there is an advantage, the only advantage they have is that they were given the law. We're going to pick up in verse 9. It says, What then? Are we better than they? Meaning, are the circumcised better than the uncircumcised? The Jews better than the Gentiles? It says, No, absolutely not. Because they've al- he's already proved before that the Jews and the Gentiles both are all under sin. As as it is written, there's none righteous. No, not one. There is really no advantage between the circumcised and the uncircumcised. They all fall under sin. None of them are righteous. And it says there's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. Think about that, brothers and sisters. We're talking back in Jesus' time. God's quote-unquote chosen people. It's talking about them and the Gentiles. It's talking about everybody. That nobody understands. Nobody seeks Father. It says they're all gone out of the way. They've all together become unprofitable. Absolutely none that do good. No, not one, it says. That's a scary thought. We had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all these religious leaders and religious practitioners who pillars of the community and looked up to. Yet they were no better than the Gentiles who they looked down upon and wouldn't even. We're all the same. One just put on a better appearance. One just looked better than the other one. World's eyes. Something to think about. We ever want to uh, get on our high horse about how much better we are than someone else we consider to be a sinner. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. They've all gone out of the way. In verse 13, says their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they've used deceit, the poison of asps under their lips. Their throat, nothing but an open tomb. They deceive people. They have the poison. Vasp under their lips. What they're saying. It says their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Now, I know a lot of us would read that and think, oh, they swear a lot. But I don't think that's what they mean by cursing. I think they mean. You come against another person and say you're going to hell. You're a sexual. You're doomed because you're a prostitute. There's no hope for you. You're an addicted to drugs. That's cursing someone. Who are you? Say that. Although it's true. Homosexuality, prostitution, drugs that warp your mind and being addicted to absolutely, definitely going to keep you out of heaven. You need to repent of those things. But it's not our job to be out there in the street corner yelling at people and condemning them to hell. 
instead of trying to show them the salvation grace so that they too could be set free. Were you not once in that very same situation, perhaps you are and just don't know it? Mouth full of cursing and bitterness. Let's tune into some of your street preachers that stand on the corner and how they talk to people. Looks mighty bitter and cursing to me. Their feet swift to shed blood. Well, they're happy, quick. Point out another person's fault. Show them how unworthy they are. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Oh, they're about. Well, they may go about aiming to, trying to bring people to the salvation of Jesus Christ. But they're just destroying everyone in their path and bringing misery to those who hear them. And I'm not just talking about the street preachers. I'm talking about lots of preachers, lots of people, their daily walks of life. Way of peace they've not known. No fear of God before their eyes. Obviously, they don't fear God if they think they can be the judge. Sort of might be overstepping your bounds. Yes, there's nothing wrong with pointing out that what someone is doing may be a sin. But maybe you should point that out after talk to them about salvation through Jesus Christ. Show them their sin. Show them how much they need Jesus Christ. Don't beat them over the head with their sin. Make them feel like there's no hope. There's no way of peace. They don't know anything about the way of peace. Forgiveness. Mercy. Grace. They're all about the wrath. Judgment. Punishment. Now we know that what things whoever the law says, says to them that's under the law. So that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may, be, may become guilty for God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified his sight. By the law is the knowledge of sin. That's what that law was for. To bring us to the realization that we truly have all sin in one form or another. Just look at the law. It'll show you quite easily how far short you fall. Your mouth will be stopped. You realize how guilty you are. Hopefully, it'll lead you to repentance. So that's what the law was for. Point them, they're unrighteous. It says, but now, now let's talk about the new covenant, the New Testament, what happened after Jesus. By now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, manifest being witnessed by the law and the prophet. So it's saying now, you can see the righteousness of God without the law. It's been manifested. It's been witnessed by the law and the prophet. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Again, it's saying, there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. There really never was. The only difference was one had a law, one didn't. That law didn't lead them to salvation. It should have led them to repentance. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So again, it reiterates the point. All have sinned. I'm sure all of them. Everybody. From Adam and Eve to present day. All have sinned. I'm short of the glory of God. But we can all be justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus. Because of what Jesus came and did, we can be redeemed. We can be justified freely by His grace alone. What great, glorious news that is. Because there was no other way. We were all doomed. The law couldn't save us. Only Jesus Christ and what he accomplished can save us. And it says about Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. Let's take a look at that. Get the King James Plus here. So it says that God sent Jesus forth to be a propitiation. Let's look at that word. That word is, means to, it's the neuter of a derivative of E2433. It's a place or a thing that is, Concretely, an atoning victim. Also, it's the lid of the ark, the mercy seat, officiation. So, let me pull it up in the dictionary quick. So, we comes from G2433. To consolate, to atone for, be propitious, be merciful. Make reconciliation. So, basically, saying Jesus atoned for through faith in his blood, we had atonement for our sins to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. Remission. That is, toleration of sins that are past. Notice that. that. That means to have previously transpired. People breeze over that and don't really pay attention to what they're reading there. Back to the regular book. For the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So when we come to believing faith, Jesus, when we repent, when we're born again, that moment all our past sins have been forgiven. More appropriately, they've been forgotten. But that's our past sin that in mind. It makes it quite clear there. Then we read, where's the boasting then? I mean, can we boast about this? Can we be proud that we're saved? Can we be haughty that others aren't? I mean, why were we saved? Was it by the law? Was it by what we did? No. It's strictly by the law of faith. 
that we conclude that a man's justified by faith without the deeds of the law. The only thing that justifies us, the only thing that makes our past sins forgotten, given, is faith in what Jesus said and did. That's it. Can't boast about any of that. Because Father gives us the faith to believe, in my opinion. But it's only through that faith. It isn't by any law that we kept or read or understood or preached. It isn't by anything we did to prove ourselves righteous. Nothing we did, nothing we read or obeyed or believed, as far as the law, had anything to do with saving us. It's only by faith, Jesus Christ. So then it says, So is he the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of course. The Gentiles also. So like I said, this started out, Romans 3 saying about, well, the, the Jews and the circumcised had an advantage over the uncircumcised and the Gentiles. They have the law. They were God's chosen people. That's how this starts out. And as we've seen as we worked our way through it, it shows that really there's absolutely no advantage because they're all sinners. They're all doomed. The law couldn't do anything for them that point out how bad they were. So again, he is the God of both the Jew and the Gentile. Seeing it's one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith or the Jew and also the uncircumcision through faith. Or the Gentile. And it concludes by saying, well then do we void the law through faith? In other words, we say, well, okay, we got faith. We don't need the law. It says, God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. We understand what the law was for. What its purpose was. To show us. How short. We fall. And how much. We need that propitiation. Jesus Christ. And what he did. And taught. We established the law. Through faith the one who fulfilled the law. Don't forget to pray for the children, fellow brothers and sisters around the world, and for those still lost in the darkness, for the day too, the light. May our Father bless you. May he keep you. May his grace shine upon you. Give you peace. I'll see you next time.